What is happening in Afghanistan? What is happening? Clearly, a lot of people are still underneath the rock and are not sure what's happening. So that's what this video is all about. But in all uh, honesty, we were literally two years old and you were like, not even one <laughs> when we first got into this trauma drama with afghanistan and what's happening so if you're our age there's a good reason why you probably don't know really what's going on so listen up because we're about to get into all the details and all the information that you're missing out that you need to know right now we're gonna make this super simple so do not come at us if we miss something or we don't share every single detail there's 20 years of history here after 9 11 the attacks on u.s soil we sent our american troops over to the middle east trying to find and locate the leader of the people who incited 9-11, Al-Qaeda, and kill them. Can I say kill? You know what? We're going to bleep this out. Kill. We're going to kill them. So what did we do? We went over there and actually we took care of the issue. During President Obama's administration, he killed Osama bin Laden. Victory, right? Oh, but don't worry. We have then gone into the U.S. or into Afghanistan, helping the military and the government there set up a more westernized form of running things and we brought a lot of peace to the Middle East. But it's been a struggle for years, for over 20 years. We've been sending so many of our troops. We've lost thousands of lives. Tens of thousands of troops have come back with PTSD and other injuries. So have we brought peace to the Middle East? Not fully, but have we helped tremendously? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So what's happening within the past six days or so? <laughs> well, isn't that just a can of worms you have to open up? The biggest question people are asking is who to blame because there's always somebody you gotta blame for whatever reason. So who is it? Is it gonna be Biden or is it gonna be Trump? Which one's to blame? Well, I'll tell you what, it's definitely not Trump. Why? Because Trump had a plan. People were like, oh my gosh, but he didn't do anything. He brought he up said it was his idea. To pull the troops from the Middle East. Yes, it was his idea, but he had a plan behind it. Whereas Biden what had he no did, plan. He had no plan. He we threw our troops in the middle of the night without telling our allies what we were going to do. It's like the walk of shame somebody does the next morning. That's what happened. The Americans did it in the middle of the night, and it is not fair to anybody. And not only did they just withdraw and not tell anybody, they left billions of dollars of our equipment and military equipment in the hands of the Afghan army that then they literally just handed over to the Taliban. What? It was literally just handed over. It's now listen. It's almost like something was plan to be like that because only an idiot could do something that stupid. There are over 300,000 Afghan military personnel that we helped train for the past 20 years and give them equipment and training and we made them into a really incredible army. On the opposite end, there's about 200,000 people in the Taliban army, okay? So there's a 100,000 person difference. Yet for some reason, y'all want to make us or tell us to believe that an army that had 100,000 less people just overtook another army. We spent a trillion dollars to help equip that army and to do things. We sent our men and women who sacrificed their lives to bring peace to these people. And you're telling me that they just let it go in a day. We're not buying day. it. We're not buying it. Anybody with two brains could know the difference between something planned and not. All this was taking place while Joe Biden and his administration decided to go on vacation to Camp David. So you're, this is essentially another Benghazi moment when Hillary Clinton in the middle of the night would not get up and help our troops and in Benghazi. And you still want to tell us that this just happened? There's over 10,000 American U.S. citizens in Afghanistan and Kabul right now. They were left there. They were left. And then what did we have? Yes, we're getting refugees out who are literally going to be killed and murdered. But at the same time, there's no vetting process that's happening with those refugees coming over into the states. Here's the thing. Peace in the Middle East. Are we going to be able to bring peace not as American citizens? Not completely. Not 100% because that's just where life is and there's crappy people in this world. But can we help? Yes, of course. but you can't change a culture, a culture that is rooted in thousands of years of animosity and, I'm sorry, hatred, hatred and Islamic control that wants to push Sharia law. Sharia law will destroy anybody in its path. And sometimes you can't always fix what's ingrained in the DNA of people. But we can't help. We can pray for those people who are stuck in Afghanistan, who have family in Afghanistan, and for our men and women who have given their lives and now have to watch everything they work for literally crumble to death and in a week in a week i mean talk about a slap to the face of our veterans here in the u.s talk about a slap to the face to this flag we digress and we can't share a whole lot more on these platforms but if you wanted us to do an unleashed with the patriot sisters podcast episode on this let us know there's a whole lot we would love to share but of course we can't on these platforms
But don't forget to always rise up, stand tall, and fight back with truth. Because we need you to really do that. And Please. as always, <laughs> we'll see you in the next one.